left for another loss. Mike Talkman comes up clutch. We talk about that and a lot more on the one-year anniversary of Locked On Cubs. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following on your preferred audio platform. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you. Hopefully, Sam did two thumbs up on all things Cubs. Today's Thursday episode is presented by Sleeper, our brand new sponsor here on the show. You'll hear more about them later as well. Swing for the fences on Sleeper Picks, and you can win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details, currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Cubs with an impressive 4-3 comeback win over the Brewers Wednesday and now can win the series in the finale on Thursday afternoon. Mike Talkman with a two-out, two-RBI double in the top of the ninth off all-star closer Devin Williams of the Brew Crew to mount the comeback. A Nico Horner ground ball, one hitter later, turned into an error and Talkman scored on the play to give the Cubs the lead, Justin Teal, Justin Steele. Wow, I'm very excited for this show. Went six innings in this one, and Adbert Alzali pitched a shutdown ninth. Uh, this is a pack show. Uh, David Ross went after a Tuesday's game off on the umpires and the Brewers closing the roof during the game. Jed Hoyer spoke before uh, Tuesday's game as well. And uh, there's a lot to get to, Sam. And I am pleasantly baffled by their win. This game was the game that, like, for the last three, four years, I've been begging to happen at this ballpark. And what's so ironic and, and classic Sam, I think, is I was in a really nice, calm thoughtful and I think somewhat positive Twitter thread about how, look, this offseason, as important as Strowman and the rest of these guys are, the Cubs have to figure out why they are so bad on the margins and more, just as important, just as important why the Brewers are so good in close games on the margins. And I thought J.D. and Boog had some really thoughtful things to say on the broadcast on Wednesday night about that. Girardi, not so much, but that's a different story. And it's been like that for multiple years where there's yeah. been a separation. Yeah, and, and, they, and they, were, they were really kind of like trying to decode it. And, and look, it's a lot of reasons, and we'll, we'll get into it at the end of the year, offseason. But the irony is, is as I'm doing this <laughs> – they, they get another blue pit from Cody Bellinger, who is the luckiest hitter in the country right now. <laughs> I mean, he just continues yeah. to just hit infield singles, blue pits. And then Jared Young gets a we really weird infield hit. The guys advance, and Mike Talkman put together, considering the opponent, considering the pitcher, who, by the way, Devin Williams, a lot of people say he's actually tougher on lefties because of the changeup. Sure. One of the better ABs you will see this season. Wow. I mean, it was exceptional. I don't know how many pitches it was, but, and you could see him grow into the at bat. At first, first pitch, he, did, he was kind of clueless. He grew into it. He grew into it. He's a guy that should be hitting a lot more with runners in scoring position because of that. And off the bat, JD just got done saying, oh, Yelich is shaded right towards the line. So when he hit that, I'm like, oh, it's a liner right at him. That was my thought. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. right at him. And then Yelich can't make the catch. The game's tied. And, and then you and I do our classic, like, are you serious? Right. Are, are they really going to do this? This just happened on Sunday. Yeah, right. And it's like, uh, 
you know, and then Horner hits a not a routine ground ball, but a, a ground ball to third. And Girardi's been bragging about Brian Anderson's arm all night long. Why? Why? And he throws it away. And by the way, heads up base running by Talkman to score on that. And then the hardest part is you go back to Adbird, who had a rough outing on Tuesday, albeit a lot of ground balls. Yeah. And he just steamrolls through right. uh, uh, Terang. Because, you know, Council, you know, it, it, he's reading the books. You know he's going to send up as many lefties as he can. Sure. He steamrolls through Terang. He steamrolls through that overrated winker. <laughs> <laughs> and then Yelich, who just c- continues to hit the ball, hit line drives every time. Oh, lines he's out, so good right now. Lines out to the 2022 Gold Glove Award winning Ian half, And the Cubs – Win another cra- and 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 almost make up for Monday's debacle. Oh, in a way. geez, really? Well, it's just that game when you're down two runs in that building and Devin Williams comes in. It's I mean we were prepping for the show. Yeah, you're right. No, everything was prepped and ready to go. I I have to tell you, this game was so discouraging. I had to make a Culver's run. <laughs> I had to you know eat stress eat. No, and, and Dansby hurts his heel. Uh, the call yes, heel uh, Dansby confusion. Swanson, who really scuffled in this ball game, <laughs> uh, exited late with a left heel contusion. He will not play on Thursday, right. manager David Ross said, uh, but will be evaluated in the morning. And uh, you do wonder if he'll miss the rest of the week just as a precaution. In a break, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, Horner could replace him on the all-star roster. But yeah. uh, a very impressive win. You know, Mike Talkman is someone that – uh, you know, close to my heart is probably exaggerating, but I, I grew up around elite. The players who were elite were, were like him around me growing up. Uh, Nick Martini, who's played in, in parts of a few seasons with multiple teams. And then uh, Kevin Kazmarski, who's still a good, a good friend of mine today, he played with the Mets. Shout out Kaz. Um, and Kaz, just when we were together the other day, the first dude he always will ask about is Talkman. Because he keeps up with with kind of more around baseball and less Cubs focused, and um, you know he has that approach where he gets deep into counts, line drives, gap to gap, uh, just a solid professional hitter, someone that's battled a lot of hurdles in his career. Played in Korea last year. Nick played in Korea last year too. They both had similar numbers last summer over there. Uh, but it's just really nice to see him get rewarded like that and. And in some sense, he has been a stalwart for this team all year at the top. Yeah, you didn't think that was going to happen when the season opened, and right. just and, a just a really solid win. And he's the opposite of some guys on this team where you'll look at his slash line and say, "Ugh, two fifty, three sixty seven, three thirty nine, eh, fine." I mean, it's okay. Right. But when you watch the games, his impact jumps yeah. off the screen. His at bats jump off the screen. It'd be nice if they could surround him with some guys that hit the baseball over the fence in fair territory because the Cubs' lack of power right now is at a level that I'm not quite sure I've seen. Um, But that's not uh, today's episode. Today is a happy episode. And uh, listen, give these guys credit, man. Like, it's been a rough year. It's been a lot of losses like this win. Uh, but the other way. Right. And the last two nights, two days, uh, July 4th and then Wednesday, mm-hmm. you know, you have to give them credit. They showed fight. They they could have rolled, you know, they could have found a way to lose Tuesday's game. They didn't. They they could have just rolled over today. They found a way to win the game. And, and to be fair to them, they had, you know, it was really one guy that hurt them today. I mean, Swanson left seven guys on and three plate appearances. That's true. Everybody else, you know, Suzuki had a few hits. Hap had some good ABs against Hauser. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I think Jared Young, even though he got that kind of cheap hit late, his days seem to be numbered a little bit. Um, you know, he needs to kind of catch up to the fastball, as you were saying. He's really struggling. Yeah. Well, it's well, this is it's really hard to hit here. Yeah, it is. It's really that's, hard to be a major that's league. That's true. I, and leave it to the Brewers to be the team that's like, hey, let's see if you can hit a high fastball. And of course. You know, the answer is no. Cubs with their 40th win. They're now back to five games under 500, which is a number that even Cubs president of baseball operations, Jed Hoyer, has publicly stated now a couple of times, including on Monday, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Sam, did we want to uh, follow up on 
David Ross after sure. Tuesday's game because he went off on the umpires and the Brewers closing their roof during the game. I, I do have some audio of this. I, I would love to play it on the air. I'd love to be the 1,000th uh, outlet that's done that. And, and it was it was nice to see some fire from him, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, we don't want to play it because there's some curse words in there. Right. Well, I yeah. have some bleeps in there. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. I didn't know you bleeped it out. All right. Uh, look, I'm not going to be the guy that says, hey, you have to do that all the time because it's not realistic. But you can be a, a, a manager that, that strengths – aren't X's and O's, which clearly I think I've made clear. I, I, I believe that's the case for Ross. But the thing that's always irked me about Ross, his time here has been the lack of fire. It's been the lack of defending your players. And I'm not asking him to get thrown out every game. But but a lot of times, Hap, Suzuki, they, they get rung up. It happened today on some really ridiculous calls. Yeah, and, bad umpiring. And, and, and Council is always pacing in the dugout, and he's always chirping. And, right. and it, it works. It gets yeah. you calls. Him and, and Boone. And, and it was really nice to see on Tuesday, even after a win, he made it clear that there was some stuff going on uh, with, with the roof. And, and the Brewers are no stranger to these weird, ticky-tacky, advantages whether it's the lights from the board closing the roof i don't like this organization 100%. and i and i've made that very clear i respect how unbelievably good they are on the margins and how they they understand being a small market team that's where they have to flourish i respect it but i don't like it and i don't like it sorry one more thing i don't like it's not that i don't like it because i'm a cub fan i don't like it because it's not good baseball and 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 I'm telling you, they were up to something on Tuesday. And I was glad to see Ross come out and say that. And, and I want more of that. I want more edge. I want more fire. That's that's not That doesn't define a leader. But part of no. being a leader is defending your guys and defending your team. And Mike Napoli really was the spearhead of that. No, I, I of course, like it. I was eating it up all, all day on Wednesday um, after Ross went off, you know, Tuesday evening and I was even reflecting on just who Ross was as a player. I, I am surprised, maybe easier in hindsight, but he's been way he has been way different as a manager than he was as a player. Hundred percent. I had someone suggest to me today that I should read his book, which explains maybe why he's that way now in the dugout. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I would be open to reading it, but I would. Um, I would. You know, he played for Jim Tracy, Lloyd McClendon, Bobby Cox, Bruce Bochy. Uh, Terry Francona, Joe Madden. I just thought that it's like he four would Hall more... of Famers. Yeah, it's it's comical, honestly. Um, and he really only won also in his playing career. So it is a surprise how he's been and what his mode of operation has been. If it took 470 career games to get here, um, I'm really curious to see if that was a pivot point, truly. For him. His career is the skipper. Yeah. But I will never dismiss that element. And I was encouraged by that, as odd as it might be to say. No, it's not odd at all. It's not and odd here, at all. And here's 48 seconds of his 90 seconds after Tuesday's game. It seemed like uh, the frustration of Empire was building up throughout the game. Is that like a combination of things? I mean, I think, yeah, there was some frustration. You know, it was big. There, You know, there's no secret in, in moments. And, you know, these guys, you can only, you know, I'm I'm trying to balance the emotions and continue to, to have these guys execute and have good at-bats. And it just wasn't very good. And I, I we made that known, and some guys were starting to get frustrated. And, you know, I know it's not an easy job, but there's there's just there, there's some of the, the pitches that got called today just weren't even close. And so it's got to be better, you know. They're closing the roof to get rid of the shadows late. There's a lot of b that went on today that just was really frustrating. Are they allowed to do that? I thought it was I don't know. <laughs> it's great. No. Isn't it's, it great? It's great. It's great. There's a lot of b that went on today that just was really frustrating. And, uh, 
you know, I, you know, you, you, and that stuff has to happen organically. You can't force it or it looks right. really, it looks really weird, but i you know, I don't know. Maybe Monday was the break. Maybe our episode on Monday was the breaking point for him. I yeah. Don't know. That was certainly a, a strong one. I don't know what it was, but even before the game Tuesday, he had a different tone. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if that continues. The Cubs can win the series on Thursday. It's going to be Stroman against Peralta, comma, Freddie. And Big game. Uh, we'll see gonna, what the North Siders can do. Unfortunately, you're going to see, uh, because Swanson won't play, that shifts Morell to second most likely, which means Wisdom will get to play a third, and Wisdom v. Peralta. Um, all right, well, hopefully we can get a win. So Absolutely. All right. So coming up next, Jed Hoyer did speak. We're going to read some quotes from him and break it down a little bit coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by a brand new sponsor, Sleeper. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. It's the fastest organically growing fantasy platform on the planet right now with over 5 million active viewers since 2022. And you can pick your players. You can pick your props. You can pick your series. Uh, pick the stack categories you want to get right. And most of all, you could win big. Swing for the fences on sleeper picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details, currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. The Cubs play the Brewers at 1.10 p.m. Central Thursday, and you can listen to every pitch with the Cubs' hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. On the SXM app, search Cubs or tune in to Channel 844 and catch the Cubs all season long on Sirius XM. Cubs president of baseball operations, Jed Hoyer, spoke before Monday's game, and these quotes are all courtesy of Sahadev Sharma in The Athletic. Hoyer, quote, is there a point before August 1st and we have to make a decision? Yeah, of course. Obviously, a week ago at this time, we were talking about the buy side. I want to still be there. We need to start to climb back to 500 again, and we need to start that quickly. When you look at a lot of underlying numbers, we absolutely should be in the division race right now. That's the truth of the matter. Now, that doesn't matter because they don't put a banner up based on underlying numbers. We have to translate that into wins and losses. We haven't done that well enough, close quote. Jed Hoyer, to me, Sam, obvious or not, but I think he does have a strong desire to buy, but he has to wait. I, as the fan, don't necessarily want him to. I think it would be interesting if they, for example, bought a left-handed reliever to try to even establish the buy or sell decision even more. Yeah, But the fact is, is the results haven't been there. Would they like to decide after this week? Sure. But really, it's about that climb, as you've said, to 500. And let's see what happens from there. Then, And then let's see how many games back of the Reds they are. Yeah, so Jed Hoyer's quote there is the, the exact same thing we've been saying. This team's better than what they should be. Right. And, and it's frustrating. And that's, and that's what it is. And that's what my monologue that I <laughs> – that I was preparing for today's show was right. going was going to be centered around this off season. More important than any additions or subtractions is figuring out how to get this team's record to match its underlying performance because th this has been the worst case of it. But there was some of it last year, and you remember you and I have spoken about this dozens of times off air. Mm -hmm. Where Jed on on six seventy, I'm not going to quote it because I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, talked about. Yeah, there was a lot of randomness. There's so much randomness in close games. We got to do a better job of blowing more teams out. And they have, and yet they've still lost even more of a higher rate of these close games. So there, there's something organizationally that has to get fixed. You know, maybe it gets fixed now or, or in the offseason that, folks, 
it's not that hard of a fix. It's a couple of tweaks. It's some good luck. It's not just David Ross. It's not just the lack of power. It's not just the lack of clutch hitting. It's not just the bullet. It's all of it put together. And each game, it's this this much of a difference. Yeah. And it adds up. And instead of being five over, you're five under. But yeah. I, I really believe, and of course, Jed's going to believe this because he puts the roster together. So of course, there's some some implied bias there. But I, I, I'm you're getting a, a guy that you're right doesn't want to sell because he believes this roster is as good, if not better, than Milwaukee's. Cincinnati will have to let play out, um, but but he believes that, and I think he's right in believing that. So um, it's it's interesting. It's it's frustrating, but. I, I, again, I'll say it again. I, I just don't think the Cubs are as far away as a lot of people do um, because of that. So They're not. I mean, even earlier, a couple innings prior to the discussion you were citing that Marquis had on Wednesday evening, they just put up a side-by-side. Here's where the Cubs rank in five main categories. Right, right, right. Here's where the Brewers rank. It was standard stats. It wasn't even advanced analytics right, or anything. Right, it was right. average, on base, starter ERA, bullpen ERA, Cubs, and there was one more. I think it was run scored maybe. Oh, yeah, it was. And uh, the Cubs have the advantage in every category but bullpen ERA. And so, um, you know, only- again, where does that fall? In, ter- yeah. in terms of the ro- pure roster, that proves that they do have a better roster. Yeah, Milwaukee has a better bullpen and a better defense and a yeah. better man and a better manager. And th- th- right. those are three big things. But there's but there's it's there's stuff. It's not that big. Like there's there's some other stuff that's going on that I if I knew the answer I wouldn't be here. I, I I'd have an <laughs> office if I ha- I'd have an office on Clark and Addison. All I could do is tell you what the uh-huh. problem is and what I think they need to do. I, I don't have any good answers outside of what I've already said. Uh, sure. But the irony is, is we're talking about this right now on a Wednesday night when they just had their best close win of the year against said team that they've been chasing on the margins for five straight years. So go figure, Thursday's a big baseball game. It is, uh, and and they created the reasons for it. So Yeah, it's, you know, uh, it, it, but even, can I say this? I think Wisdom Homer's Thursday. Oh, well, then, then, then I'll be, you know. You know, uh, but I'm certainly not going to put tickets on it. Straight. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so bad at life. Strowman is due <laughs> for 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 a pretty good outing, because uh, he's had two kind of mediocre ones in a row. Uh, yes, so that you, would you wouldn't be nice. think he'd have three in a row. And well, and he already dominated this sorry Brewer offense uh, on opening <laughs> day. But Matt, right. what one thing I want to say is that even though they are seven out and it does feel kind of bleak, there's not one second of my life I won't enjoy going up to that stadium, passing the broad stop, and finding a way to win three out of four against those slimy, nerdy brewers. (laughs) So I really hope on Thursday afternoon, which and I will not be able to watch much of that baseball. Ah, That that, that won't won't be a blast of the past of America's great pastime. Uh, But but I'd love to be game casting and see that we took that series because you know how I feel about that team. Yeah, I'll be able to watch most of that ball game. I I, I do have a a three o'clock appointment in the suburbs. But uh, is it like a dentist or you prefer? Yeah, that? something like that. OK, sure, so, sure. Yeah. Now I could kind of use it. an appointment after today's festivities. Uh, <laughs> <After> <laughs> had a little bit. Hour, yeah, right? I had some stuff not agree with me, but I'll be I'll bounce back. All right. That sounds good. All right. Coming up next, we are going to talk about ourselves for a few minutes. So oh, great. Uh, we do that next. We're back here on Locked on Cubs. Wherever and whatever you may be listening. July 5th, 2022, we began hosting Locked On Cubs. We wanted to spend the rest of the show celebrating our one-year anniversary and thanking the audience. Thank you so much for being a part of the ride. It has been nothing short of a wonderful experience. This has become a huge part of my life. It has made me also... uh, a bigger fan of the team than I, than even I was. And I, I would consider myself a diehard sure. a year ago. Um, I have really grown to love podcasting even more than I did. Um, really the whole 
process, hosting, producing, uploading. And, um, you know, <laughs> Sam, it's been a nice ride. Well, well, yeah, no, no, it's not ending. So, um, thankfully, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my favorite part of the show is for the first time ever, I feel like I have a community, not, not a, not a couple people, but a community that shares my uh, irrational emotion when it comes to this team, the the lessons I've learned over a year, I will try to learn is how hard it is to separate fan and, you know, color analyst, if you will. Sure. Uh, because you have to be logical, but you know, you're, you're dealing with something that is, you know, very, very close to your heart, but having right. such a, a fun group, the everydayers that we have makes it, just it's really fun. Like it just every single time since I would say mid April, I have gone on Twitter. I have a notification. Right. And, right. And, and, and it's cool. Cause like, I don't like do a lot with my life. So like, it's just really fun to be able to like interact with those people. And like, I've just spent nights sometimes just talking to fans. Sure. And, and you know, fans of the team that listen to us and, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Like I, 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 I they identify with us. I identify with them, and uh, it, you know, that's my favorite part about it. My my least favorite part is when they lose. <laughs> okay, that's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, it's, it's been good. All, it's been awesome, man. It's really in all seriousness, it's been great. And hopefully, at this time next year, we'll be talking about um, buying at the deadline and, and competing for a world championship. Oh, it'd be phenomenal. And yeah. Uh, yeah, again, we just appreciate all the support. Yeah, it's a lot of support. And, you know, there could be some other ways you could support us that we may announce, you know, as the season rolls along, maybe as soon as this weekend. Um, there's some yeah. stuff that we want to try. Maybe some, some maybe some I still want to do something live, you know, in some, person. Yeah, we want to end like a little watch along where we do some play by play. Watch and, along on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Or you guys get to see my live reaction when we when when we when we ground into a double play with, with three men on. And yes, and I think that would really um do it justice to see Sam and, and his live element. Um or not to me, but sure. Let let everyone else enjoy my misery. And you know, the people that know me the best, um you know, I, I wouldn't say they 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 would not expect this of me, but I am just going to come out and say it um, because I I think that you know what I'm about to say has been proven over time, and 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 not everything Sam needs to be explained and spelled out. I've learned that as a teacher and coach as well. Um, but you can't you can't buy chemistry. Right. And I think doing all the reps that we did for two years before anybody even knew who we were um, has paid off greatly. And, uh, you know, we did a show weekly for two years. Basically, no one listened. Right. And uh, Nick. we got Nick this. Listened. Yeah, we got this wonderful opportunity with Locked On. And um, I, I, I really think we've seized it. And I'm, I'm proud to say we're the number one. Cubs show we have been since February uh the audio ebbs and flows but mostly steady um but YouTube it's not even close I mean truly it's not even close and um I I think I think there's something really special happening here and uh much of it is due to the listener so thank you so much again we hope the Cubs can win the series on Thursday up north. I don't remember what city it is, but I do remember a lot of Cubs fans cheering when Mike Talkman got that hit. Uh, get a brat with mustard only. Just saying. Shout out to the everydayers who are with us all five episodes throughout the week. And you can become an everydayer by checking us out each and every weekday. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button for the algorithm. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and streaming on Sirius XM. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.
There's a lot of that went on today that just was really frustrating.